Okay, my friends, lesson three, lesson three in our grammar, page 17. Um, we've got to get some nouns all up in here. The reason is that every language has nouns. We need nouns to speak, and we're going to get some nouns. Um, in English, as you well know, nouns do not have gender. There are no masculine or feminine nouns. There's no special way of saying you or your or they or them and all that kind of stuff, depending on whether you're talking to a male or female. Um, there aren't special grammatical forms or endings for um, a chair versus a lamp, um, given that a chair would be feminine for some reason and a lamp masculine. No, 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 not in English. But in many languages, this is the case. Um, many languages, indeed, possibly languages that you've um, that you've studied, like Spanish or German or something like that. Uh, many of the world's languages have had grammatical gender, and Hebrew is one of those. Um, there's no neuter in Hebrew. Um, we get masculine or feminine. So a Hebrew noun may be one of the following options. It may either be masculine or feminine. Okay, in gender. And then when we come to number, Hebrew nouns may, might be singular, sus, a horse, one horse. They might be dual. Um, um, you get a special grammatical number for dual, for two of something. This typically occurs in Hebrew with body parts. Um, so yad, a hand, yadayim, two hands. Okay, so just two. Um, or things can be plural, more than two, or just let's say more than one. The duel really, don't get too, don't get too excited about the duel. As awesome as the duel is, um, the duel is not, not particularly common um, and is easy to recognize because of that I am ending. Um, um, so really, let's just say singular and plural. Um, and we get distinctive endings for each of these types. So page 17, see how it gives us some of those endings. The masculine singular doesn't have any distinctive ending. Um, so for a word like melech, there in letter A on page 17, or sus, horse, those are both masculine singular nouns, no special ending. Um, feminine nouns very often, typically, end in a he or a tav with an a or t ending. Okay. Uh, the dual ends in the I am, kind of all crunched together there with a patak and then a yod, and then a hurek right under the yod. Do you see that in the dual there in the chart on page 17 right at the top? And then the final mem. The plural comes in two, two forms. Um, for masculine, the ending im designates the plural. Im, you're going to see a lot of that. And the feminine is marked by oath. Oath. Um, and you're going to see a lot of that. Okay. And so, so see, I'll give some examples of these various kinds. You can read them for masculine. Sus, a horse, a male horse. Melech, a king, a male king. Okay. Down below, though, under B, Roman numeral one, you see Susa, Susa, a female horse, a lady horse, a mare. Malka, queen. Um, um, and you know, you can look at some of these other examples here of all these different kinds. This is a rather short and simple chapter, but these are concepts that you just you need to know. Now, page eighteen, Roman numeral five, right at the top. Some feminine nouns are actually not marked as feminine with the t or the a ah ending. These are irregular; they will be noted in the vocabulary. Um, um, aim, for example, mother, you might think the word for mother is feminine, and indeed it is. Um, or the word eretz, eretz, very common word in the Hebrew Bible. Earth or land, that too is feminine. Now he gives a note here right below those two words, aim and eretz. Parts of the body that come in pairs are almost always feminine. So regal, raglayim, two feet, yad, yadayim, two hands. Um, so body parts, regardless of whether they're marked as feminine or not, with a T or an H ending, are going to be feminine. Masculine plural nouns, you're always going to get that im, so sus, susim, letter C on page 18. Sus, susim, you get that? Letter D, Torah, that's a feminine singular noun. You want to make a plural? Tack on your oath ending. Boom, there you go, Torah. Notice that you lost the a there, you just kind of get rid of that a ending, and you substitute the oath. 
Oh, if it were always that simple. And sometimes it is. Mishmeret, obligation. Mishmarof, obligations. Feminine plural. Um, feminine nouns, which are unmarked for gender in the singular, are usually marked for gender in the plural. So about two-thirds of the way down the page there. Eretz, feminine singular. Plural, aratzoth. You might say, hey, it doesn't work like, why, why isn't it eretzoth? Well, sometimes you're going to get vowel changes when you add a plural ending. Oh, I know. Um, a, lot of, a lot of times, the vowel underneath the first letter in a Hebrew word will actually reduce to shava. This is a, a principle known as vowel reduction in Hebrew. Um, will reduce to shava if the word starts to get a little bit too long. That's a very untechnical way of putting things. But you can see there, two-thirds of the way down the page, Eretz, Aratzoth, notice under the Aleph, what do we have? A shava. It's a compound shava, remember those? So Aleph being a guttural, along with ayin, chet, and he, does not take a, a bland, sing single, lonely shava, but rather the composite. So you got that little patak next to the shava, and it's pronounced as the, as the vowel there, ah, so ah, so if, yad, a hand, feminine singular, yadoth, hands. There you just tack on the oath ending, no problem, okay? Don't get too, don't get too crazy about the duel. Um, you know, Sion makes a big deal right here as though the duel, like, appears in every sentence or something. It doesn't. You could read a lot of Hebrew and never see a duel, okay? I'm not saying the duel's not important. It is. I'm just saying, you know, not saying we won't slip a duel in on you on a quiz or something. I'm just saying, you know, it's not everywhere. So, you know, as an example up there on the top of page 19, um, Shana, a year. The plural would be Shanim, years. But if you want to do a duel, Shana Tayim means specifically two years, a pair. Okay. Not every noun has a dual form. The dual is restricted to nouns that come in natural pairs, like two hands, yadayim, raglayim, two feet. Certain expressions of time, pa'amayim, pa twice, yomayim, two days, measures of two, like shinayim, or, or matayim, 200. Sometimes you get du uh, duels for no reason. Shamayim, uh, this is a more common word for um, heaven, and the word mayim, which is actually a pretty common word, is grammatically dual, but there's no real reason for that. There's no, there's no clear relation. The word Yerushalayim, page 19, about halfway down, do you see that? Yerushalayim and Mitzrayim, those are both dual. It's not totally clear why Yerushalayim is dual, um, or why Mitzrayim is dual either. Mitzrayim might be dual because of Upper and Lower Egypt. Um, um, you know, you get this sometimes, okay? By the way, sometimes letter a, uh, number uh, letter F on page 19. Sometimes you get a singular noun like of bird or behema beast, which nevertheless implies a collective group. Okay, um, so of can really mean bird or birds, behema beast or beasts. Then you get a few nouns, too, that are plural in form but have singular meanings. The most famous of these, page 19, letter G, is, of course, the word Elohim. Elohim for God, which has that im ending, so can mean gods as well. Um, why Elohim as a plural stands for Israel's one God is, is one of those scholarly mysteries, not totally clear. It could have just been a kind of uh, a way of pluralizing as a way of distinguishing Israel's God from El, um, Aleph Lamed, which would have been a known, a, a simple word for God, but just by saying, oh, this God is like all kinds of gods rolled into one or something like that. Um, or the word Adonim can mean Lord or Lords. So on page 19 and 20, he talks a little bit about these changes in nouns with endings, the vowel reduction thing that I talked about. So page 20, um, letter I, in the propritonic open syllable, that means the letter before the letter before the last letter, okay? This is where you'd have to do a little bit of, uh, of, of syllable counting, okay? If you get a comet or a sere, a long vowel, it reduces to shiva. So, navi, and then if you added the ending, im, for plural prophets, navi, prophet, you think you just tack on the ending, navi, im, right? Well, no, that doesn't work because now you have the comets, but beneath the nun there, do you see the comets there? That thing that looks like a little t, the vowel? Navi. Um, now that's in the open propritonic syllable and it reduces to Shiva. Nevi'im. Nevi'im. 
levav heart, levavoth hearts. It's not 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 a, not a Sarah under the Lamed anymore. With the ending now, it's a Shabbat. Okay. Gutturals, of course, as we remember, prefer the composite Shabbat. So you still get reduction to Shabbat with gutturals. It's just that um, um, it's a composite Shabbat for Chet, Aleph, Ayin, and Hey. Um, if there's no reduction in the propritonic syllable, Sere in a pretonic open syllable is reduced to Shabbat. You can see some examples there, okay? I know all this can seem overwhelming or a little bit confusing. You also sometimes get contraction. Uh, letter B on page 20. I contracts to A. So Zayeth, Zayeth, Olive, goes to Zaytim. Ayo goes to Elim. More contraction. Awe contracts to O. So Aven, trouble, and Mavet, death, in the plural. Um, Onim, troubles. Motim, deaths. Onim and Motim are not common words, okay? He's just pointing out the fact that there are some vowel changes. You, you need to know that, okay? Um, by the way, feminine nouns that end with final A sound on page 20, letter C, you just get rid of that. Get rid of that hey. So if you got a hey hanging off the end of the word and you want to make it a feminine plural, get rid of the hey. Jose, seer. Josim, seers. Roe, shepherd. Roim, shepherds. Okay? So this is pretty straightforward stuff, um, um, and you need to know it. I'll read the vocab list, and we'll be done with this one. Page 21, the vocab list. All nouns. Ozen. Ozen. Ear. Notice the feminine dual. Um, Oznaim. Notice there too are comets, is the comets hatuf, that O sound. Oznaim. Because the comets there under the aleph in the dual uh, um, is in a closed on accented syllable. Ozen. Oznaim. L. Or really ale, I should say. Ale. God. God or the god Ale. Elohim. Elohim. God or gods. Aim. Aim. Mother. Emoth. That's the plural there. Emoth. Eretz. 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 Land, earth, country. Um, there's a word more for like soil that would be Adama. Um, Eretz more refers to land as a geographical entity. Feminine plural Aratzof. Aratzof. Dam. 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 Blood. You say, well, why isn't that dome? Because you have the comets in a closed syllable there. Ah, but it's an accented syllable, so it's just dam. Dam. Blood. Derek, 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 way, road, plural, Derekim, not written there, I'm just saying it. Cherv, 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 don't forget your ch sound at the chets, okay? Cherv, feminine plural, Charavoth, sword. Yad, Yad, hand, power. Yad, in a very few instances, can also mean penis, phallus, okay? Not often, but I throw that in there. Yad. Lev, or levav, same, same meaning. Heart, or mind. Lev, or levav. Uh, the masculine plural, um, um, it's a masculine, okay, and this is one example of a word. You get this in Hebrew, sorry, I apologize, but what can I say? It's a masculine singular word. But the plural is formed with a feminine ending. I know. Why make a rule and then do this? I don't know. I don't know. Levavoth. Liboth. Levavoth. Liboth. Plural. Hearts. Minds. Mayim. Mayim. The word mayim is always dual. Okay? Always dual. Um, water. Mishpat. 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 Notice there um, the Shava in Mishpat is silent, not vocalized, because it closes a syllable. Mishpat. And notice the comments there is the A sound, not the O, because it's accented. Mishpat. Judgment, justice, right, custom. Shofet. 
would be a judge, one who judges. The book of Judges in Hebrew is called Shofetim, Shofetim in the plural. Uh, and as a verbal form, Shafat, to judge. Remember, for vocab quizzes, we're only going to do the main form, not these forms on the side. He gives these forms on the side, like shofet and shafat, verbal and participle forms, or participle and verbal, respectively, in order to start introducing you to the concepts before we get to them. It'll help you learn. Next word, nefesh. Nefesh. Feminine plural, uh, nefeshoth. Means self or person, traditionally translated as soul. Um, it's not clear that the ancient Israelites had a concept of the quote soul, the way that Greek and Christian writers, thinkers later would. It can also mean breath or willpower or desire. Nefesh can mean desire. I mean, literally, your nefesh is your throat, okay, where your breath comes. Nefesh. Ion. Ion. I or spring. Both meanings. Pe. Pe, pe, mouth. Panim, panim. Um, panim is always plural, um, face or presence, literally faces. Um, when ancient Israelite authors talked about your face, they always talked about you having two, two faces. Maybe they thought in terms of halves of the face, kind of like we say a pair of pants in English, like, well, why is that plural? Well, I guess there are two pant legs. They said, Panim faces me because, you know, you have two sides to your face on either side of your nose, you know. Um, can also mean presence, related to the verb pana, to face or turn. Have you noticed in these vocab lists so far that sometimes there'll be a noun like panim, but there's also a verb that kind of sounds like it? Yeah, this is how Hebrew works. Often verbs and nouns are related to each other, okay? Of course, you have this in other languages. I think off the top of my head, like Google is a company and also an internet search engine, and also we have now a verb, Googling, right? So verbs and nouns kind of play off of each other in languages, so too in Hebrew. Regal, regal, regal. Feminine singular, um, and the feminine dual, raglayim, foot, or two feet for raglayim. Finally, shamayim, shamayim. Don't confuse shamayim, heavens or sky, with mayim, water. I know you've got the Mayim in both. Shamayim, always dual, means the heavens, or really more literally just the skies. Not clear that the ancient Israelites had an idea of heaven, like God is up up somewhere, although you do see this in some places. Probably just best to translate Shamayim as sky, or skies. There you have it.